Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on accounting ratios where we are going to discuss activity or turnover or efficiency ratios. Now these three are one and the same thing but the name is different and they also mean the same thing. Activity or turnover or efficiency means literally uh, how exactly are you able to turn your operations into revenues whatever investments you have made in the organization whatever assets you have in the organization how are they being turned into or transformed into revenues from the operations that you carry out so operations means activity turnover means sales or revenues and uh, efficiency means how efficient is the organization in converting its assets into sales so as i said activity turnover or efficiency ratios means rapidity with which the resources available to the concern are being used to produce revenue from operations so whatever operations you have in the organization whatever assets you have in the organization how efficiently are you able to utilize those assets in order to produce revenues that is the basic meaning of activity or turnover or efficiency ratios there are four kinds of activity ratios inventory turnover ratio that is comparison or ratio of stock and turnover that is sales or in this case cogs trade receivable turnover ratio that also uh, that means net credit sales that is turnover we take credit sales and then receivables are debtors in the organization or people from whom we have to receive money trade payables are people to whom we have to pay money or creditors in the organization and turnover is again sales and working capital turnover ratio is net sales upon working capital which means uh, the ratio between working capital which is current assets minus current liabilities and turnover that is the sales so we'll briefly study all of them one by one and well and then we'll take a lot of very good quality very advanced level questions as well as very basic and conceptual questions to create a very good clarity as to how do you calculate these all uh, four ratios and what kind of questions can be asked in the examination so first of all let's talk about inventory turnover ratio or stock turnover ratio the formula is cost of goods sold cogs upon average inventory now when we are talking about inventory or stock we do not take sales at first hand we take cost of goods sold and the reason is that inventory is valued at cost for example you produce cycles and you have a stock of 100 cycles in your uh, warehouse so when you are stocking these cycles you are going to stock them at cost right you know you're going to value them at cost rather than valuing them at the sale price because the sale price will include the profit margin also so when you're stocking them you stock them at cost therefore when we are comparing inventory to turnover we take cost of goods sold uh, upon average inventory and not net sale upon average inventory in case cost of goods sold is not given then we assume that cogs or cost of goods sold is equal to sales cost of goods sold can be calculated by opening stock plus purchases plus direct expenses minus closing stock so in all the three ratios that we have discussed uh, so far through the mcqs the uh, methods or the formulas were not very heavy but in activity ratios the formulas are going to be a little more heavy so we'll try to uh create acronyms for these formulas as well cost of goods sold can also be calculated by reducing gross margin from sales or by adding gross loss and average stock is opening stock plus closing stock by 2 that is the average distribution of the stock in the entire year if opening stock or closing stock is not given if one of them is not given then we take the remaining figure to be average stock we don't divide it by 2 we take the remaining figure to be the average stock by itself for example let's say the opening stock is 1 lakh 20000 and the closing stock is let's say 2 lakh 40000 so the total stock is uh, 3 lakh 60000 you divide it by 2 and you get 1 lakh 80000 now if there's another case where in opening stock is not given you're given only closing stock so you will take 2 lakh 40000 to be the average stock in the enterprise so this is the formula you can remember this formula you can write it down so that when we take a lot of mcqs it's going to be a little beneficial for you what does uh, the inventory turnover ratio teach us it tells us that if the ratio is low that means the denominator is more much more than the numerator then we have a lot of inventory in the go down which means that the storage costs are going to increase and the funds are also blocked in terms of inventory or stock that we have right if the ratio is high that means that inventory is being sold quickly 
goods might be sold at a low margin low profit margin but the profit profitability uh, might be uh, very high and the reason is that we are not spending a lot of money on warehousing or stocking the inventory on storage of the inventory and on blocking of the funds the next one that we have is how many times a uh, trade receivable ratio now trade receivable ratio is uh, net credit sale upon average trade receivable net credit sale upon average trade receivable why do we take trade uh, net credit sale and not cost of goods sold we take net credit sale because trade receivables are the money is the money that we have to receive from people for example i am selling cycles i sold two cycles to a person who came to my store and asked for cycles and said that he needs to buy five cycles but he can pay for only three and he needs credit for two cycles i said okay you take these two cycles on credit that means that particular person becomes my debtor he is not my creditor he is my debtor because he owes me money and he might also be called as trade receivable the money that is to be received from him can be called as trade receivable it is an asset for the organization because it is due and it is to be received from that person so whenever we are we are calculating trade receivable we are selling something and therefore we take credit sale in case of cash sale they cannot be credit because when you sell on cash you receive money outrightly or instantly therefore cash sales are ignored in this case and thus the formula formula is created that is net credit sale upon average trade receivable net credit sale here is credit sale minus sale return and average debtors are or average receivable are opening debtors plus opening br plus closing debtors plus closing bills receivable divided by 2 you need to remember this now the acronyms for both of them inventory turnover ratio and trade receivable turnover ratio the acronym that you can you can use in order to remember this particular ratio is csr wherein cs is credit sale and r is receivable or the debtors so csd or csr can be used very easily the acronym for inventory turnover ratio that you can use is cog s i or you can also use c g s i cost of goods sold or goods sold raised to uh, upon average inventory that can be used for inventory turnover ratio that will also help you remember it easier so c o g s i c s r for this one what does trade receivable turnover ratio tell us a low ratio means that the credit sales policy is inefficient the firm's credit sale policy is inefficient and a high ratio means that there is less risk of bad debts because a high ratio means that the ratio of sales or the proportion of credit sales is much more than the average trade receivable that means you don't have trade receivable a lot of trade receivable in the organization a low means low uh, ratio means that the credit sale policy is inefficient that is you you have a lot of debtors in the organization from whom you have to receive money now the same thing can be applied and used an example of banks can be used in this case their trade receivable turnover ratio is very low which means that they have owed uh, they have uh, loaned a lot of money to people who are not paying back when the money becomes due and therefore their trade receivable turnover ratio seems to be increasing and uh, it is an assumed example not a perfect example but uh, will help you to understand how exactly trade receivable turnover ratio works in trade receivable turnover ratio we calculate something else also which is called as collection period collection period is how much time will it take for you to collect that money that another person owes to you that has to be collected so average collection period is calculated by using debtor turnover ratio and after debtor turnover ratio we calculate the collection period the formula as uh, is 12 upon debtor turnover ratio or 365 upon debtor turnover ratio based upon whether we we even we want to find out the collection period in terms of months or in terms of days the next is creditors turnover ratio the third one as uh, mentioned in the name itself creditors turnover ratio is how much money do you owe to people from whom you have purchased something or the other so in this case we take net credit purchases that is how much we have purchased on credit from other and average payables that is on an average how much do we owe to another person or another enterprise average payables can be calculated by using this formula opening creditors opening bp closing creditors closing bp divided by 2 very similar to average receivables 
the higher the ratio the better it is and why is it better it is better because you are paying whatever you owe in the required time period and which increases your credit worthiness because if you do not pay on time then you might feel in the short term that you are gaining that money for example if you had to pay let's say 1 crore rupees in the next 10 days but you paid it after 20 days then you have used that 1 crore extra rupees for 10 days and you might have earned certain interest on it but it is affecting your credit worthiness in the market and therefore your long term uh, viability long term survival is affected in this case the last one that we have is called as working capital turnover ratio working capital is current assets upon cur minus current liabilities that is net working capital how much working capital do you need in order to run the enterprise on a day to day basis that is working capital the money required and it is always calculated on the basis of sales because whatever money you need to run the enterprise that will be creating certain products and that will be sold in the market and creating some returns for you therefore it is uh, it is calculated using the net sales and not cogs a high working capital turnover ratio means net sales are much more than working capital which means the working capital is being utilized efficiently for every 1 rupee that i am putting in the enterprise in order to run the enterprise is creating a lot of sales let's say rupees 5 worth of sales it is creating so working capital turnover ratio is high if it is low it means under utilization of working capital opposite of high if it is very high it means over trading that means you are you are using very little or too little working capital and that is also harmful for the enterprise and if it is very low that means you are using working capital in excess of how much it is required 